Hey, Daryl, what's up? Hey, Skippy, what do you need, a spark plug? No, I gotta take a dump. Yeah. Make sure you hit the toilet this time. Oh, okay, Daryl. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. I feel a lot better now. Hey, Daryl, I think you're gonna have to call the bomb squad. Yeah. Why is that, Skippy? Because I just blew up your bathroom, man. <laughs> Well, if you don't need a spark plug, what do you need? Other than blowing up my bathroom. Uh, my transmission on my mower. It's skip, 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 skipping, eh? So, what do you mean? It's like jerk, 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 jerking? Uh, it's more of like a skip, 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 skip. So, what brand of tractor is it? A Husqvarna? No. I wouldn't own any of that garbage, eh? It's a John D. Well, why don't you just bring it in and I'll check out why it's doing that jerk, I mean skipping. Thanks, Daryl, eh? You're the best. Here, let me shake your hand. Ah! Did you wash your hands after you went potty? Uh, I don't remember. Ah! Eh? All right, get out of here, fecal fingers. Eh? Okay, I'll bring the drag there in. Pterodactyl here. Today's video is going to be on this here Tup Torque K46 Hydrostatic Transmission. Now this came out of a John Deere L120. And the complaint is sometimes this thing would be like rough starts. It would kind of like jerk a little bit even though it's got a brand new drive belt on it. And then at one point the customer said it quit working altogether and then it started working again. So we're gonna take it apart, take a peek inside, see if we can see anything in there that's causing it to do that. So the first thing we need to do is to take off this top pulley, which is held on by a snap ring. So now get yourself some snap ring pliers. Remove the snap ring. And the spline pulley comes off. There's a spring washer underneath there. And then you can remove the fan. And we'll set that over there. Now we can get to the filler plug, which is right here where you fill it with oil. And to remove that, I'm going to use a screwdriver and I'm going to tap it with a hammer. Pop that cap off. Then inside is a magnet, which is going to catch any kind of metal that's in there. So check that out. And that'll give you an indication of how much metal is on that magnet. will give you an indication of how badly damaged your transmission could be. Now this has got some metal on it. Not too bad. I've seen worse. And then there's also another magnet inside on the differential. We'll check that when we get it apart. So now all I gotta do is flip it over, drain all the fluid out. Now the fluid is at the right level when I pop this cover off. So it's not low on fluid, which would be an indication of that jerking or it quit working if it's low on fluid. It should be about three quarters of an inch from the top of here. The fluid level. So it looks like it's right. <laughs> looks a little dark though. Now if your transmission is dirty, you're going to want to clean it off because you don't want any kind of dirt or debris to get in there. So it's a good idea to clean it all off and clean it real good. You can pressure wash it with your pressure scrubber and get it nice and clean before you tear it apart or disassemble it. And we'll pull this cover off.
Now all these bolts are the same size on the outside here. All right, I forgot one. And these two inner ones are longer. And then there's some fry points here so you can pop this cover off. So go around and fry up on it a little bit in different areas because you could break these tabs off. So just gingerly go around till you break that seal loose. And then carefully lift off the cover because sometimes if there's a lot of sealer on here, the sealer will stick to like this part here or some of the brake parts and then they fall out and then you're like, oh crap, where did that part go? This is our filter. And as you can see, the filter is pretty plugged up and dirty. So that may be part of the reason it's not working. It's restricting the fluid from going through there. So they do make a seal kit. Now you could probably clean yours, but they do make a seal kit that you can buy from Tough Torque. So make sure you have all your information ready off of the transmission. There's a barcode on the trans. Do not remove those stickers, because that's important for when you're looking up parts for your transmission or if you call over there. What's in the L120? Yeah, well they need more information than that. Now here's that other magnet for the differential. Now what we've been seeing on some of these transmissions is a lot of wear. If you've got a very ex excessive amount of metal on this magnet, you wanna check these differential gears because that's where the metal is coming from. So you may have to replace your differential gears. And they also, Tough Torque has a, a kit where they add two more magnets to this area where the filter goes. They have a bracket that bolts up on here and they have a couple of more magnets that help to grab more metal before it enters into the motor or the pump. I believe this is the pump and this is the wheel motor itself. So I'm gonna go ahead, let me get my, uh, my magnet on a stick and we're gonna pull this differential out and we're gonna inspect these gears real quick. Got my Tough Torque magnet on a stick from Tough Torque. Pull this retaining clip out and pull the axle out a little bit and there's another clip under there. That's why you need magnet on a stick. Now we can pull the this axle back, take this gear out, let's take the other one out. Pull it back a smidge. Kind of rotate it so we can get the top of it. Thank you, magnet on a stick. Pull that back. Feel it, see if it's got any sharp edges on it. Now these are the these are the ones that we really want to look at. Drop that pin down there. See, that's why you got to have magnet on stick.
they look good they're not bad now i do have another transmission in here it's another it's out of another john deere it's a k46 and it has bad differential gears and i'm going to get them gears and i'm going to show you them gears you want to see them gears i got them gears let me go get those gears you want to see them i got the gears want to see the gears so here's the differential gears out of another transmission that we got in here and see how much metal had come off and what it it had done is that metal had gotten into that we that uh, trans pump and into the wheel motor and it wore it down that look that metal got in there and wore the pump and uh, and the wheel motor parts down to the point where it couldn't build any pressure and the tractor couldn't move anymore couldn't go forward or reverse you had to help it it would barely drive so and that's all from that metal coming off of these gears flaking off now what that's from why it did that I don't know maybe somebody was excessively going forward in reverse or maybe these gears weren't manufactured correctly because it's like a centered metal. But for that trans, we're going to get us a new set of differential gears to fix that one. Here's the filter out of that other trans. You can see remnants of metal stuck in the filter, but obviously some other metal had got past it. Alright, I'm going to take my oil extractor. Oh, this thing's old. This thing's got to be close to 18 years old now. Maybe older. And slurp out any remaining oil that didn't come out when I flipped it over. I don't want to flip it over because parts are going to fall out. Mainly this. Flat side goes there. And these brake parts will fall out. And this will fall out if we flip it over. If you don't have an oil extractor, you could take those parts out. Then you could flip it over to get the rest of the oil out. Slurpy, slurpy. Let's dig deeper into this tough torque transmission. What I'm going to do is remove these little bits and bulbs. That one's being held in by the adhesive, so I'll just leave that one alone. Take this out. And then 14 millimeter, we're going to pull this assembly out. They're really torqued down good. They're tough torqued. That's why it's nice to have this little stand. Speed things up, we'll zip them out now. Now always pay close attention to how this part is on yours. Because if you flip this 90 degrees, your reverse will become your forward and your forward will become your reverse. So this determines your forward and reverse, this little wedge part. So this is on some, some pins. So you gotta kinda pry it off of there. There we go. Carefully work it off. Now 
carefully lift this whole assembly out. I'm going to take this off, set it back in there for now. We'll set that down right there. So we want to inspect this. We can pull this off. These little pistons are probably going to fall out on you and some springs. That's just that noise you hear is just some oil draining out. So this is what we want to look at. This part right here. And we want to look for a lot of wear. Particularly in this area here between these kidney shaped holes. Right here in this area is where you're going to find wear. If you have a lot of wear right in this area here from here to here you're gonna lose pressure this has got to be totally flat this part and looking at this one I'm feeling with my fingernail I don't feel any kind of ridge on there so that's good otherwise you gotta replace this part now I've done this before in the past where I've got something that was very flat like a piece of glass or granite or even a flat table or flat piece of steel and took some 600 grit sandpaper wet dry sandpaper and on that flat surface sanded this thing flat again and put the transmission back together and it did work so that's a cheap way of refurbishing this part and you also have to do the same to the pump so now we're gonna to the pump body so now let's pull this off this assembly now there should be a little pin in there, there, there's that little pin. That little pin is for your release. You know, you got that release lever that releases the pressure. That's what this little pin does. So don't lose that little pin. And then you've got these little pins on the side here. And what these do is that so you have smooth engagement when you go from forward to reverse. That's what these little valves do. And these little valves got a spring in there and there's another little screen at the end of this down in there which you can't see. There's a little tiny like screen in there like a filter almost. See, there's, there's a hole at the end of it. We're going to inspect them, too. Oh. And there's a little, there's little balls in there. Little check balls. And that one just fell out on me. The other one's probably laying in the bottom of the pan. So you want to inspect this surface too. For wear. Make sure it's nice and smooth. And these are. Both of them. Because this has got to be totally flat. And then I've done the same thing. Took that 600 grit sandpaper and, I, and took a block 
<clears throat> of rubber, thick rubber, almost like a sanding pad, and then smooth this surface out again. That's a cheap way of fixing it without having to buy that expensive pump kit from Tough Torque because they sell you this whole new pump body and all these other parts and seals and the oil. They give you the oil and everything. That's why that kit's like 400 bucks, 450 bucks. But chances are the problem this one was having was all due to that plugged up filter. Wasn't letting the fluid through fast enough and was making it jerk and then so we'll get us a new filter. We'll get us a filter kit for it. I gotta find that other check ball. It's probably in here. Alright, I found it in the pan. That's why I gotta have magnet on a stick. She done jumped out on me. So if you notice, this filter looks different than this filter. It's a different type of filter. But I'm just going to go ahead and order a new filter kit from them. Instead of trying to clean this one. But you may want to try to clean yours. And then I know you're saying, well, what do we clean it with, Terrell? I would clean it with like brake cleaner or carburetor cleaner. But we're going to put a new filter in. I'll get filter kit for that one and a set of differential gears for that other trans. And I'll get a new filter kit for this and that should take care of that problem. Now remember I was telling you about these little valves? Now down in the bottom of here is like a little screen. Let me see if I can get it to come out. There's a little tiny hole in the end of that. I'm going to get a little piece of wire and try to poke that screen out. Well, looks like we got a little accident here now. Better call in the Andersons. Went to poke that filter out of that out of that valve and discovered that there was no filter in there. So I went and I grabbed my tough torque materials that I have and I had forgotten that if you've got the check ball, all you have is the valve, the spring, and the check ball for the ball IDS. The filter IDS has the valve, and there's that filter I talked about that I was trying to poke out with the wire, and then a spring. So there is no ball. So I have the ball IDS, not the filter IDS. And then here's some more little information down here on that pump body. And then here's that new magnets and magnet holder which will probably end up adding to this transmission. So I'll get that and the filter kit for this one. And this transmission should be good. Now when you have it tore down to this, this part is a good time to start cleaning all that old silicone off before you go reassembling it. Now that you have it tore down this far. Be careful not to gouge the aluminum or aluminium, however you say it, because you want to get this all nice and clean. And of course, when you're doing this, some of that 
silicone may fall down in there and this is a good chance you can get it out, extract it out of there before you have it all back together. Because we're going to put it all back together until we get our filter kit. So we don't have all these pieces laying around. We got everything all cleaned up now. Got all our surfaces clean. Got all the holes blown out. Got the cover cleaned. And in my opinion, this is the most time consuming part of this whole transmission whenever you're working on these transmissions. Is the cleaning it and getting it ready to reassemble for that silicone. That seems like that takes more time than rebuilding the transmission itself. Getting all that clean and getting all that silicone off and or getting most of it off. But you got to make sure this is all clean inside. So now we're going to reassemble it. And I got a hold of, of the fine people over there at Tough Torque, and I told them what the trans was doing. Like in the beginning of the video, it was kind of jerky. And then at one point, the guy said it, it stopped moving at all, and then it started working again after he let it sit a while. And I told them I thought it was because of this filter being plugged. And I described the filter to them, and they said, send us a picture of it. We want to see a picture of the filter. Because this doesn't have, uh, this type of transmission doesn't have a charge pump. So it's got to it's gotta work off the fluid that's in the sump cover. So I think this was being restricted and it wasn't letting enough fluid in it at one time. And that's why he was having that problem with the jerking, like it was low on fluid and where it just stopped all together because it couldn't it couldn't pass enough fluid through this filter fast enough to keep the transmission moving and then when he shut it off it kind of saturated itself again and then it had enough fluid and it started working again so I think it was this filter was the whole problem because everything else looks good in there so here you're learning you're learning about these transmissions and I'm learning too isn't learning fun it's fun to learn, ain't it? Especially my channel. Some channels are boring. This is a fun learning channel. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and drop these balls back in because we have the ball IDS. And then the springs next. And the valve. So we'll get that put together and get that, that part out of the way. We'll wipe off any kind of stuff. I'll hold my fingers on there so they don't fall out. My fingers. Make sure that you know you don't leave any lint behind from the rag you're using too. Then we got this little pin that's got to go in here. And what they recommend, you put some grease on that to hold it for you, make it sticky. Otherwise, it's going to keep falling in and out of you. And that little bit of grease will get absorbed because, see, it goes through there. And then this pin here, this is your release. This is that little lever you pull to release the pressure on the trans. So when you push on that, it pushes on that pin, which pushes the pump away from here, pushes that cylinder away. So now you can't build any pressure because that thing is pushed away. That's how that works. So if you were to accidentally leave that pin out, your trans would still work, but you would never be able to freewheel it when you pull on this lever. All right. So let's get this ready to go back on. Make sure this is clean and doesn't have any grit on it. That's very important on these transmissions, any transmission, even if it was a car transmission. Everything's gotta be clean. And you can't leave lint behind from the rags you're using too, because that can cause a problem. So we need to put our springs in. See, here's more of that silicone. That stuff's everywhere.
Now you're going to kind of have to hold those in place and drop it on there. So it's a little tricky because they want to fall out on you. All right, now we got that done. Now we got this, which is all together here. Now remember I was telling you about this wedge piece? You can put this piece in like this. It will go in there. There are some transmissions they make that it goes back in this position. That changes your forward and reverse. If we were to reinstall it like this, the forward and reverse would be opposite. So you'd go to hit your forward pedal and you'd go backwards. You'd hit your backwards pedal and you'd go forwards. Now we have to put that on here. Flip this over. Make sure nothing falls out. And we'll reinstall this. Got to get it around this. Got to do a lot of little operations at one time to get all this stuff to fit back in. And another thing, got to make sure this flat on this gear here is just like that. It can't be flipped around. That's got to be in that position. Getting all this to mesh together. This is the trickiest part. There we go. There we go. Now it's in. Whee! Now I'm just going to put these bolts in and just snug them down until we get our filter kit. This way I don't have all these parts laying around the shop until my parts come in and then I lose them or they're going to get all dirty from other jobs. All right, now we play the waiting game. All right, so I got a hold of my friends over there at Tough Torque, and I told them what I needed, and it's called a seal service kit, is what I had to get. And what comes in the seal service kit, and I'll give you a part number right there, 1A. 6460991411 and that's for the K46 and the T40. So you get this seal kit and in the seal kit this is what comes in it. Belco Cincinnati sealer to seal the cover back up. A bunch of uh, the new filter, trans filter we're going to talk about that. A new magnet, axle seals, a top seal, a bunch of different O-rings for any shafts that go through. You got a whole bunch of O-rings. A new vent cap and a new plug where you fill it, filler plug. And then a gallon of their, their fluid. So on the trans we're doing, I'm gonna probably replace the top seal, the axle seals, and the filter. So let's talk about the filter. So here's the filter that we're replacing which we think is the problem, or I think is the problem. And this is the new filter. I think it was restricting the oil flow. So this new filter has got these little prongs in there. So they make a new kind of like universal filter. Here's another filter. This is actually the filter that's out of this T40. This is a T40 I'm working on. I'm working on that and I'm working on this other one. 
So now the new filter covers a bunch of all the different models. See it's the same diameter, same height, but it's got these little extrusions in the middle. So I asked them what those were for and they said it also works on their TZ as in Terrell and Zebra. And I guess a magnet goes in there. So on this T40 that I'm working on, I noticed it's got this sticking in the middle of the cover. So when I went to put the filter on, these are in the way. So I called and talked to them over there and they said to just snip them off and they wanted me to send them a picture of this cover. Because they may have to do some modifying or add some instructions with a filter to explain that you need to cut those off. So that's what I had to do for this one. Cut them off so I could get the cover back on. Otherwise, these little things would hit. See, if you were to put this on, you can put this cover on. Okay, the cover ain't gonna fit, and you're gonna hit it with a hammer, smash it, take the bolts and press it on there. You're a stupid thing! When all you have to do is simply take some side cutters and cut them off, and the filter will work. So I just wanted to show you that. There are differences in these filters. There's another filter that they have that's pleated, and that's for a different type of transmission that's got a charge pump. This doesn't have a charge pump. So we need the oil to flow through it. A charge pump is a pump, and it would push the oil through it under pressure. This doesn't have a charge pump, this type of transmission. It just works off the oil that's in the pan. So if you got a dirty clogged filter, it's not going to let the fluid go through quick enough. And that may be the problem that we're having with that other transmission with the jerking and all of a sudden it's stopping and then 15-20 minutes later it's working again, like I explained earlier. So this trans is going to come off and then this is the one that we're that we're doing this video on that gets the new filter. That's a K46. This is a T40. They look very similar, but they're different. That's why it's very important when you contact Tough Torque for parts that you have your model and serial number of the transmission. Otherwise, you're gonna end up getting the wrong parts and that's gonna be very frustrating. Because then they got to send them back and you're going to be all mad and that's because you didn't give them the proper information. That's why you got to have that barcode on there and you got to have that info because you could get the wrong parts. All right, let me get this trans off, get the other one up. Now again, I'm not going to replace every O-ring and seal that's in this kit on this here transmission because it didn't have any leaks, but I am going to replace these axle seals since we got it apart. And to do that, you need a magnet on a stick. And look, Tough Torque's even got their own magnets on a stick. You take this retainer out, you pull back on the, trans, on the shaft, and there's another clip in here. Now you can remove the axle. I have other videos on these tough torque transmissions showing you how to replace the axles. And then take a screwdriver and pop the seal out. There. And then go ahead and clean this out. Any kind of oil that's on there. Now, I have the Tough Torque seal tool to install the new seal. 
The shaft has to be clean. Now as you can tell, we had to do the old heat quench on this, this uh, rim to get this wheel off of this axle. So this doesn't fit on there very nice. Plus it needs to be clean because we got to slide that new seal on there. So I'm going to take a Scotch Brite. Kind of knock most of that off. It's still, it's still kind of roughed up. So I'm going to take it on my wire wheel on my bench grinder and buff it, buff all that crap off of there. Slides on there now. Now if you don't have a wire wheel, you can use sandpaper. Another thing is sometimes this keyway gets a little raised up. So you may have to take a file and file the edge of that keyway there a little bit. Because I've had them where they raise up a little bit from that that key on that wheel rocking in there. Yep. And so we don't damage the seal when we put the seal on. Now you can put the seal in. It's up to you. You can put the new seal in while you got the axle out. Tap it in there if you don't have a seal tool. But it's got to be recessed that little bit. So you may have to get something to kind of recess the seal. And another thing is, got to make sure you put the seal in the right way. So if you notice, there's a little spring on this lip. That goes in. That faces in. It's a little deceiving if you look at the seal. So there's a little spring in there, that little lip spring, and that faces on the inside. See when I dug out the old one, the little spring popped out. Another thing you can do is you can use the wheel, the hub of the wheel, in one of these washers to drive the seal on. So take some tape and wrap one layer of tape around that keyway. Electrical tape, masking tape, don't use duct tape, it's too thick. Slide the axle back in, pick up on the differential gear a little bit so you can get it to mesh. Push it in far enough to where you can see the groove in the shaft. And then put the little C retaining clip on. Shove the axle in the rest of the way. And then put your other retainer in there. And that locks the axle in. Give it a little tug and make sure you got it locked in. Now we're ready to put our seal on. So you're going to want to put a little bit of, got all this crap in the way. So put a little bit of oil on the lip of the seal. So I got some oil in my little stand here. So I'm going to lubricate that. Spring in. So this is going to keep, the tape is going to keep you from damaging that spring or cutting the seal. Now I'll take the tape off. Now again, you don't have this fancy expensive seal tool. Take this washer that comes on the axle with the spacer. You can even use the spacer. And then take the wheel, shove the wheel on to drive the seal into here. And then you may be able to take this 
and drive, drive it in a, that little bit more carefully. But I've got the seal tool, so all I have to do is this. And it drives it right in. So, you've got your seal tools are on your trans right there. Now I just got to put the seal in on the other side. We're going to put our new filter in. And another thing I had tough torques on me is they've got this add-on magnet kit. Now if yours doesn't have this, you can add this to your trans. This is the retainer. And then you're going to need two magnets. So here's the part number for the holder. See, magnet holder. can also, also pause the video and get a pen and paper. You're going to need two of these magnets. Now what these do is also to help if any kind of metal, like in the case of that other T40 trans, the differential gear started to flake off and that metal got into the pump and that's what ruined that other trans that we had up here. So that one needed a total rebuild. So this magnet holder is just a couple extra magnets to kind of catch any more debris before it gets into the motor and the pump. So two magnets go in here and then it, you take out this bolt and you bolt this on here which we're going to do. I got to remember to put that other seal in. They also give you a set of instructions in that seal kit. These case bolts are 33 to 40 inch pounds when you go to torque them. So 33 to 40, I just set mine at 35. So now we got a little bit of added protection here. Slide that over to make sure it's in place. I got my handy dandy torque wrench. Already set, 35, so gradually go around and tighten these pump center case bolts. You don't want it to go right to 35 or 40 foot pounds. You want to go around gradually and Tighten them down. There we go. Click it, click, click. Click, click. Click, click. All right. And our filter. Make sure your surface is all clean, your cover is all clean before you apply the sealer. But yet I'm going to go ahead and put this other seal in. Take a break Mr. Cameraman. Alright, I need to put this part back in before I forget. That goes right here. Flat spot goes up against here. This is rounded, so that goes like that. And then here's your your brake or parking brake. Pay, pay close attention how this goes in. This goes in like this. It does not go in like this. That's wrong. It will fit in there like that. That is wrong 
goes like this. And then here's my other pad. And again, you can see where it was wearing on the disc that goes in there like that. Now my other differential magnet, which goes right here. Slip that in. Now we're ready to apply the sealant. And I always like to put the sealant on the cover because the cover, it's easier to get all these little spaces than it is as if, if you tried to drizzle it all through here. So wherever you see a channel is where you're going to want to put the sealer. So they're telling you, put the sealer here, put it here, follow it all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead and take some brake clean or some carb spray. And I'm going to clean that surface and this surface real good. Then I can go ahead and put the cover back on. Alright, I'm going to use my handy dandy little tube gripper which we sell in our online store. See, it'll even work on these little baby tubes. So just start anywhere and don't put a big heavy bead because it'll smush out. And then after you do this, you gotta let it skin over. So you gotta let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes. Don't go crazy with the silicone. It'll smush out. Go around them. The bolt holes. And then you can always save this because you're not going to use the whole tube on it. You'll have some of this stuff left over. Probably there's a, probably enough in there to maybe do three of these covers. Another important little tidbit while we're waiting for our silicone to skin over, this flat it's got to be like this. So if you've taken this out, you want to make sure this isn't cocked like that or spun all the way around. It's got to be just like that. It's very important. It's got to be in that position. So now we're ready. Put the cover on. Just take another look, make sure you got all your little pucks and stuff. Look on your bench, make sure you didn't forget nothing. And then about 15 minutes, we'll come back and bolt that cover on. We're gonna flip it over. And then I'm gonna pop this seal in. That one on the top shaft. Might as well, since we got this thing out and apart. We'll fill it with fluid. And we gotta put it back in the tractor. It should all be good. Fingers crossed. Now when I put these cover bolts on, I like to use a speed wrench. Because I want to make sure I'm not going to cross thread them. So what I do is I, I back it up. I go in reverse till I feel it click. And then I run them down. Because if you use an impact and you cross thread them, you're going to have a bad day. You don't want to strip these bolts out. And just make sure when, you, when you're doing all this, when you did all your cleaning, that you blew these holes out real good too. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. Because I know we filmed on this. Then I had to wait for the parts. Now these bolts are 16 to 18 foot pounds. And again, gradually, just going across pattern, there's no right or wrong pattern. Going across pattern and gradually tighten them until you get to between 16 and 18. You can set your torque wrench to 17. Yep. 
I feel that little click and I know it's in the right spot. That's why I like using the speed wrench. You don't have a speed wrench, you just try to thread them in by hand, get them started by hand and then you can zip them in with your little impact or socket ratchet wrench, socket wrench. Alright, so now I got the cover all torqued, I flipped it over and I'm going to dig this seal out because I'm going to replace it even though it's not leaking. Some of y'all might have a seal tool, if you don't you could just take a screwdriver punch a hole in it, dig it out. Oh look at that, there's some sealer in there. Oh no, that's just where I drove the hole in it. Good yeah, dummy. I'm going to clean that up a little. And then again, I'm going to put some oil on the lip of the seal. We don't want to roll the lip, so I'm going to kind of give it a little spin. Get on that lip there a little. Oh, it's not cooperating. I don't want to ruin it. Yeah, I don't want to roll that. You got to be careful. Give me a little. I'm gonna give me a little tiny screwdriver to help get that started. I got me a little screwdriver. I'm just going around, just helping that lip get around that shaft. Yeah, it feels like it, like it went on. And again, I have the seal tool to drive this one on too. You're just gonna have to tap yours in there. I wanna get it kinda squared up. And I just wanna look and see that I didn't roll that seal. It looks good. clip back on there they're all different this one had two of these stacked on there and then of course our fan and that'll go on but we want to fill it you can tell this vent it's a little dirty oh let me put that on there. I don't want to get any stuff in there. I'm going to blow this off real good. Since we got a new vent cap, might as well use them. side cutters. Take this thing out of there. Could have probably just left it alone now. 
There we go. Here's the new one. I'm gonna put a little oil around it. You know, they tell you you could fill it through here, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise that. You seen how hard it was to get off? You're probably gonna ruin it getting it off. It's better to fill it through there. All right, there we go. New vent. I'm gonna hold on to this old cap. Sometimes they come in and these are all dry rotted if we're just doing a fluid change. I could always put a good used one. Now we're ready to fill it. Where's that? Here it is. Looking all over, it's right there. Sealed for safety. Three quarters to one inch from the top. Now I gotta get a funnel. There are some specs where you can use regular motor oil. Do not use ATF. Do not use it. They recommend you don't use it. It may work, but they say don't use it. Now it holds almost a whole gallon. So you're gonna have some left over. So if you are gonna change the fluid and you don't wanna buy theirs, cause you're cheap, there are some motor oils. You gotta look up your trans and it'll tell you what what grade of motor oil. It's usually a synthetic. Oop. See, I overfilled it. No big deal. Got my handy dandy oil extractor or oil sucker as I call it. I just slurp some out. Slurp it down. So it's three quarters of an inch to one inch below the top of here. And there's your dinner. Now I know what you're saying, Terry, you should put all those, you didn't put all those seals in from that kit. Well, that's not what it was in here for. And if I visibly seen a bunch of leaks, then yeah. Because some of these O-rings and stuff, you gotta take this thing completely apart. If you wanna take it all apart and do that on yours, that's fine. But this one just was skipping. It didn't, it was full of fluid. It didn't lose any fluid. Now we gotta add our, our magnet. There is another magnet that goes in here. I need to clean it real good before we reinstall it. A little magnet holder. So there's a little magnet holder. Drop that in. Our new cap. Give it a tippy tap. Now this is ready to go back in. Okay, Skippy. It's all fixed. It doesn't skip anymore, oh. Skippy. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, that's that's what I want to hear. All right, let me fire it up. filter in it.
This thing is awesome. Look at it. Looks like it goes a lot faster now. Yeah, it goes a lot faster now. So be careful. You did a great job. Eh? Well, I gotta take it though. Eh? Again? Be right there.